Today's attack on Israel cannot be forgotten, and it will end in history created by a weak and ineffective United States president and vice president. They wouldn't have done this if I were the president. They wouldn't have done it. And they didn't. With time, the situation will only get worse for our country with the kind of leadership that we have right now, which is no leadership. It's probably worse than no leadership. It's negative. It's negative leadership. It must galvanize Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Conservatives, Progressives, Libertarians, and everybody else to put strength, respect, and power back into the USA where it belongs. This attack, just like the attack on October 7th or the Ukraine-Russia war, think of it, Norwood country-busting inflation. You know, inflation is destroying our country. None of it would have happened. It would have never happened if we, if we were president, it wouldn't have happened. It's a dangerous and terrible time for the world. And it's almost the entire fault of incompetent Biden-Harris administration. She who says that she wasn't the border czar. She wasn't the border czar for three years. She was the border czar. She let it be known, I am the border czar. Then she never went to the border. These are, she's terrible. She's worse, she's worse than he is, I'll tell you right now. I want to be nice. They all say, I think he's changed. I think he's changed since two weeks ago. Something affected him. No, I haven't changed. Maybe I've gotten worse, actually, because I get angry at the incompetence that I witness every single day, the way millions of people are pouring into our country. And that's the thing that must change. It must change quickly. It's great to be back in this beautiful state with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. As you know, six days ago, we officially defeated the worst president in the history of the United States, crooked Joe Biden. Have you heard of him? Have you heard of him? He was badly beaten, and everybody went to him and said, Joe, you can't win, you can't win. He said, no, no, let me debate him. Let me debate him, please. That didn't work out too well either. That was the end. The debate was the end. Beat you, Joe. You're going to lose. You got to get out. We want to get out. You got to get out, Joe. There was nothing nice about what they were doing. It wasn't democracy, was it? It wasn't democracy. They were saying, we want you out of the race, Joe, and we want you out here. You're going to lose. These are quotes from some of the fake news. Look at all the fake news back there. Wow. That's a lot of fake news. Man, that's a lot of fake news, Mike. Joe, you're going to lose. We want to put somebody else in. And then I realized last night, I was speaking to a great group of people, Christians, all Christians, and they've been horribly treated by this administration. Today I spoke to Bitcoin crypto. So I went from Christians to Bitcoin, and now I'm with you in Minnesota. We cover a lot of territory. Think of that. So Christians to Bitcoin to Minnesota. We cover a lot of territory. And I never mess it up by saying, let me tell you about Bitcoin. I don't do that, no. Remember Biden, of course, I don't want to talk too much about him, but when he was in Iowa, and he said, it's great to be in Idaho. No, no, you're in. If I ever did that once, it would be the end. Let's say that's the end. He's cognitively impaired. That would be the end. The fake news would go crazy. But I thought last night as I was speaking to this incredible group of evangelicals and a lot of others of faith, it's, uh, oh, you like that, don't you, huh? Wow. That means our country's coming a long way because you put faith back, you put religion back into our country, it's going to be a much better place. But I thought last night, I said, you know, it's sort of unfair. You have a guy, he says he's great, he's president and all that stuff. They rigged the election, but we won't talk about that. And he say, they say he's president. So he comes out. And he comes out raring to go, and he gets badly beaten. He's losing, and all of a sudden, he's like a fighter. He's losing. Then they took him out of the fight, and they put a new fighter. We have a new victim now, Kamala. We have a new victim. We have a brand new victim. And honestly, she's a radical left lunatic. And she is, when you find out about her, all I have to say is, Defund the police. That was her big thing. Let's defund the police. And as I often say, you know, politicians don't change. Whatever they say first, that's where they are. They don't change. Wouldn't you say that, Tom? Whatever they say, if they said five years ago, eight years ago, defund the police. She said it like two years ago or three years ago. But so if that's what they say, that's ultimately where they want to go. But this was really a coup of 
and by the Democrats. This was a coup of a man that had 14 million votes. He wanted to run. They wouldn't let him run. They treated him horribly. They said to him, we can do it the nice way or we can do it the hard way. To Joe, he's president. This was a coup with the presidency. They threatened him with the 25th Amendment. They said, Joe, we're going to threaten you with a thing called the 25th Amendment. You're cognitively and physically a mess. And if you don't get out, we're going to take you out with the 25th Amendment. And he said, I'll go. And then the fake news said, oh, he was so brave. He was so brave. He was forced to leave. So now we have a new candidate to defeat the most incompetent, unpopular, and far-left vice president in American history, probably the most far-left person history. Less than four months from now, Minnesota is going to defeat Kamala Harris. And we re remember what I said, a short time ago, a short time ago, she strongly fought for many, many bad things. But to me, I love the police. We're not defunding them. We're going to fund them, fund them. We're going to overfund them. She's just thinking. She's defund the police, and I'm overfund the police. We're going to overfund. We're going to evict this radical and incompetent administration from the White House, and together we are going to make America great again. <laughs>